everybody, welcome to a new episode of the Digital Loop. My name is Ivan Hernandez, and I'm here welcoming you today to the Digital Loop. Hi, Paul. What? What? What, what is wrong with you, Ivan, today? <laughs> sorry, what? sorry, sorry. Sorry, I, 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 I'm listening to, to Gary Vaynerchuk's new book, the hashtag Ask Gary V, which is actually very, very, very good. So I'm, I'm a little bit pumped up because the moment that you told me about this topic for today's show, I started to realize, you know, okay, Gary is talking all the time about Snapchat and we are talking about something that is connected with this, with a new way how we are communicating. So I, I'm a little bit excited. Sorry about that. I drink too much coffee this morning. But what are yeah. we talking about today? Yeah, well, I've been following I've been following Gary on Snapchat for quite a while. It's true. He's been talking about his book for the past five days, like every half second. So it's uh, pretty entertaining. You should actually follow him, guys, if you if you haven't already. And you should download Snapchat because it's interesting. So uh, today uh, there was two articles that just evoked, and I'll get to Snapchat in a bit. Uh, first, it was uh, an article from a friend of mine, Thomas uh, Solfa. Uh, and he wrote an, uh, this article called The Future of Conversational UI Belongs to Hybrid Interfaces. I was just going to quote the first sentence. 2016 is a year of everything conversational. And I think that's actually on point. Uh, we've already been talking uh, in past episodes, of obviously, about messaging apps and about how we are evolving in new ways of interacting with each other. Uh, but it's not only all interacting with each other. It's not only all brands interact with people. It's now how we interact to do everything. Uh, I was reminded uh, of that because there's a new app here in the UK called Hero, uh, where you can basically, it's an assistant. You can ask it anything. And you say, I want to know if there's a room available tonight at that hotel. You can ask if uh, you can have flowers delivered. You can ask if you want to be, if there's a type of particular food in your neighborhood and you want also to be delivered via delivery, for instance. These apps already are developed, obviously, in the US already. There's some in New York and in the Silicon Valley. But I was thinking of how, and this is why the article of Thomas is actually interesting, of how. You know, we used to download apps for everything. So we, uh, you have an app for, you know, messaging, obviously, but then you had an app for social networks and an app for buying stuff and then an app for buying uh, plane tickets. And then you have an app for every single thing. And now, basically, if you look at the top 10 uh, on apps downloaded, both on Google Play and on iOS, they are mostly basically the four, the four big ones, Amazon, Facebook, Google, and Apple. Uh, and... What that means is that there's maybe some kind of app fatigue, but also what it, what it implies is that there's new ways that people are developing. Instead of asking you, Ivan, to download an app, you can actually now do most of the stuff within existing apps, which are obviously, for instance, Facebook Messenger. We talked about Facebook M in the past, which is, again, also an assistant like the hero just mentioned. Uh, there are others. There's WeChat in China. We can actually already buy stuff. Uh, as well. So, and I found that interesting. And the second bit, of course, that will come at uh, the second part of the show was an article in the New York Times about Amazon Echo. It's not available elsewhere, uh, just in the US. It's basically a device that sits in your living room, in your office, in your master bedroom, whatever. And you talk to it. You talk to an assistant. You say, I want this. I want, you know, I, I'm missing apples. And then Amazon Fresh delivers it to you. I want to buy that song, and Amazon Music buys it for you. Or I need that book, and you get it delivered. So these are new ways of interacting, which kind of diminish the power of not only apps, but of course of the web browser, of the URL, of even the destination website or the destination at all in, 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 in its entire definition, because you don't need to. You just need asking an assistant. Do you, do you, have you ever tried one of those? Are those any available in where you live in Eastern Europe, Ivan? Um, yeah, no, I mean, and, and, and this is something that is connected with what, what was mentioned in this, some of these articles, that if you think about it, we are talking about the augmentation of email. And the, the younger generations, the, the, the teenagers, the younger adults, they don't use email. I mean, of course, they use email, but they, it's not like as, a, as, a, as a big, important part of their lives as our generation. They are communicating through messengers. They are communicating through Snapchat, WeChat, WhatsApp, Messenger. And, and basically, what's happening today is that this is starting to have an impact on every single other uh, um, marketplace and every single other type of businesses. Um, in that uh, article that you mentioned from Thomas Tolfo, a very good article, by the way, um, I, I love this quote that he says that every community, marketplace, on-demand service, dating app, social game, e-commerce product, 
has or will have soon messaging as part of the experience to drive retention, engagement, and tra transaction volume. Correct. It is, it's something that is crucial and it's something that every marketer should be keeping up with the evolution of these this, this, this messaging apps. Because these apps are not, you know, you just made them and they are done. They continue to evolve. And what we're seeing today is that these applications are starting to integrate with others. We were talking about the uh, it now, uh, I don't know if it's only in the US, but it's possible to order Uber uh, Uber rides through Facebook Messenger. Correct. Uh, and, and there are s situations that these applications are starting to integrate because everybody's using messengers, but uh, the, these messaging apps, because Messenger is how me uh, Facebook Messenger, let's say. Uh, I have here some data that I thought was really interesting to share that. Uh, uh, there are more monthly active users on messaging apps than in social networking apps. Yeah, it's something been, that yeah. if you think it's changed at the end. It's, I think it's changed at the end of 2015. I, I think the the number of people. I think the numbers. I don't have the latest ones, but uh, of uh, I think what's that? Uh, well, according, uh, you have you have some according, numbers. Uh, yeah, according to the to this article that we have is, uh, and of course the article is on the show notes. Uh, there is three billion monthly active users on messaging app versus two point five billion in social networks. Wow! So uh, that's that's incredible. Also, the top four messaging apps, uh, when we're talking about WhatsApp, Messenger, WeChat, and Viber, uh, or Viber, I don't know how you call it. Uh, they are uh, about three billion users. So this is something that is huge everybody as donald trump will say this is huge uh this is something that is huge and everybody everybody is communicating and everybody is using this type of apps so it makes sense that actually this user interface is starting to to integrate these different elements because it started to become a really really relevant part of our lives yeah there's also qq mobile it's also in china uh, there's also skype actually skype some some numbers show that they have more uh, numbers than uh, more users sorry than the um, viber line as well but again this what matters is this new type of new wave of using uh, messaging apps uh, there's a company research company called vision mobile uh, actually, they're friends of mine, so I need that for full disclosure. But they've written an article recently that I'll also put in the show notes. And I'll just kind of quote one sentence, messaging apps are transforming into messaging platforms. And I think this is really the key. Uh, as there's probably, like I mentioned earlier, an app fatigue, there's also now a redirection of all those within where people are. It used to be that people were all are on social networks. We used to say that. People are on social networks, so you should be on social networks and interact with uh, Brands should interact, for instance, with people on social networks. Now people have moved more into a more one-to-one -one or one-to-many uh, system of interaction within messaging apps. Thus, these uh, platforms are being developed and integrated and augmented as well. Uh, it, and it caters for all industries. The BBC, for instance, is now uh, also on WhatsApp. You can receive headlines of the BBC on WhatsApp directly. So it's also for news. If you look at the latest Quartz, Quartz is uh, uh, it's a website that delivers, it's a very good uh, uh, website for news. Their newest uh, iPhone app kind of mimics the, uh, the, the layout of a messaging app. So it's not a messaging app by itself, but it mimics it, showing there's a trend towards that. People are very comfortable to talking and they'll be more comfortable. The other thing that is interesting is that so airlines are using, for instance, now messaging apps for customer service. So customer service, because the helpline calling customer support is dying very fast. Already phone calls have been dying for quite a, quite some time, but now they're using these messaging apps. And more so, it actually allows, and that's very interesting, the use of uh, some kind of artificial intelligence of bots, basically. So instead of having always people on the other side of the line, you could actually scale much faster by having not only automated responses, but smart automated responses. You need something, I just said you want to buy flowers. If you say that, you, the, the app knows what your location is and it will actually get you answers or even get you flowers delivered. And you would only actually talk with a bot. You've actually never interacted with a human. It's a bit similar to what we'll talk in a bit. If you ask that to Siri on your iPhone or to Cortana on your or on Microsoft, to Alexa on on Amazon, and there's actually a new one. If you have uh, the iPhone, you should try Hound. It's a new, uh, also voice-activated uh, app. It's really fantastic. You should actually try it out because it, show, it shows that even if voice is maybe not as natural yet, uh, it's going there very fast. Hound is probably, for me, the one that actually works the best right now. But again, 
it shows the diminishing importance of uh, apps and web. I, I will actually quote two uh, very interesting uh, quotes by uh, two uh, companies that do uh, this type of apps. One is the, does an app called Assist, which is basically that a, a bot. It helps companies have a bot behind the interface with everything. You can have it on Slack and having a messenger and everything. And um, he, he says, think of messaging as a browser and bots being the URL. And I think that's, that's actually very true. That rings wow. very true to me how it, it's, it's evolving. And uh, the other thing is, he, he, the, the founder says, every business in the world is going to have a bot. They just don't know it yet. And I think that's actually very true because, again, this diminishing, you know, always the desktop and the web has been diminishing since the rise of mobile. And since now there's a app fatigue or at least an app consolidation, that means only a few uh, winners are there. And then the rest, even if there are 3 billion apps, you're never going to see them. You're only going to see the top 10 or top 20. The fact these bots are being integrated within these existing apps is something that, that goes in that uh, same direction. Another uh, quote that, that I find very interesting, uh, it's uh, an app called Caller. It's also a messaging app. The its CEO says he sees text messaging as a next web browser, and I and I think as well that that rings as uh, true as well. So do you think uh, do you think that you will start abandoning your apps, uh, Ivan, and go into messaging for everything? Yeah. Well, I don't know if I will start abandoning my apps, but um, you know, it really got me thinking and being self-aware of how I use you know, my behavior when I'm using my phone. Uh, and, and yes, I mean, you, you, when you start thinking about it, you realize that a lot of the times, most of the time that you're doing the things that you're doing on your phone, you are messaging somebody. And, and of course, of course, there is still the element of email, you know, particularly when you're talking about clients, but there are, I have, and it's funny, I have two, three clients that part of our conversation, we no longer have through email, we have through messenger. And and of course there is the element that we are we are we have a, we're friends. So it's not just that we are uh, you know this client official relationship. So we are connected on Facebook, but we move away from this official let's say official structure conversation through email through the, the, the traditional way through you know WhatsApp and 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 Facebook messengers and every once in a while there is these little uh, um, silly photos that you can send and stuff and. Uh, it has changed the way we are communicating, and 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 as I mentioned earlier, this article that uh, that we have also the why every marketer should be keeping up with the evolution of messaging apps, it shows that this is the direction where we're going, especially when we're taking into consideration the new generations. And I'm not going to call them millennials because I hate that term, but these new <laughs> younger generations that are that are really really uh, growing up already with this as part of their DNA. And what's interesting is how this is having an impact in older people. Um, I, just to mention, I don't know why we're bringing uh, Gary a lot today, but uh, I remember Gary Vaynerchuk made, giving a speech uh, some time ago, and, and he's in a, in a room full of uh, executives, and you can see that everybody's kind of like older. And, and basically, as part of his presentation, he raised, he asked, okay, how many people in this room in the last six months have sent an emoji? And everybody raises the hand. Yeah. And he's like, if I have asked you this, five years ago that any of you is going to be sending a, a smiley face or poop with eyes, you will think that I'm crazy, but this is what's happening today. So it's really interesting to see how, yes, this, these applications are allowing us to be closer, allowing us to be in direct contact with, with friends, with family, with clients, uh, and it's allowing us to be more effective because now you know, I know that I can reach, you know, reach you or reach, you know, my friend right away instead of sending the email and hope that maybe this person will check his email. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Talking, talking about the bot, because that's the thing, not only talking to each other, we're talking about bots. And I think this is what will allow companies to scale because we'll always have this uh, conversation between you and me, Ivan, we'll, we're using Messenger for most of the time because that's, because depending on where we live. But Bots will allow companies to scale not only customer service, but everything much faster. There's an example in China, I'll put an article in the show notes as well, that I've seen, I think it was already last year, uh, because since I love airline, China Eastern has been using something, so I, I don't speak Chinese, so please forgive me for my bad pronunciation, Xiao Ice, which is uh, an AI, so a bot, that was developed in partnership, I think, with Microsoft, 
and the, it already caters, it already communicates with you very, so in the, in the example of the airline, it was able to have some kind of customer support. You can even order drinks, I think, within the plane. Uh, but this is an article in Nautilus, uh, which is fascinating about how even some people are talking and using it as a friend because it's so natural conversations that they already kind of talk to that bot as if it was a friend. It, it reminds you of the movie called Her, obviously, mm -hmm. when you see the, the guy actually falling in love with a UI, falling in love with a voice, which is an operating system in the end. And that's a, a bit similar, uh, it, which allows us to go to that the second bit, which is voice. Uh, you, you talk with, again, that's a science fiction movie, but is it really science fiction? Again, if you look at some of the apps nowadays I have at home, uh, for instance, I have the Amazon uh, Prime Video device under my TV. I also have the, the latest a Apple TV uh, device, and both are voice, ac are voice activated. So one is Alexa for Amazon, and the other is Siri for, for Apple. I can uh, look for shows, and at the beginning I was like, I would never do it because it sounds so silly. But of course, being the guy I am, I wanted to try, I wanted to see how it works. And you know what? It actually works really, really well. It's, you, you ask for a show, uh, the, both UIs, I mean, the UI in terms of uh, the design is very well done. So I could do most of it by just the, 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 the remote control. But it feels very natural to ask the device to look for something for you, which goes to the, the article I mentioned at the top of the show about uh, Amazon Echo. Amazon Echo, when it was launched, uh, people thought it was a gimmick. They said, okay, so Amazon is trying one more thing to just see if it sticks. It was just after the Amazon Fire, their, their, their phone, which kind of burst into flames. Nobody bought it. <laughs> and uh, then Amazon Echo was, was launched. And it's, again, a, it's a device that sits. It's a speaker uh, and, of course, in a microphone. But another microphone you have to be sitting in front of. But it just listens constantly. And you ask Alexa, which is the name of the UI, uh, of the UI there, you ask Alexa to buy whatever you need. You said, I, or you even you say, like I said earlier, you miss apples and automatically goes a mouse and fresh and puts apples in your basket. And it's actually taking off. Uh, the same way it's taking off, uh, messaging apps are taking off. Most people say for messaging apps, it will take off when Facebook opens the messenger SDK. It's still not open yet. You mentioned the Uber integration. The same thing will happen on Amazon. The more there are integrations, the more services and stuff you can try, and the more it becomes like a center of your home in a way. I really, I'm really curious to try. I really want to buy one, but it's impossible to get one. I mean, you, I, I could theoretically buy one in the US and bring it here, but I would, would you have that? Do you think, for instance, that your wife or your kids would love to have that in front, in front of them and just talk to it? Uh, I think the key here is what you mentioned earlier. It's natural. And I think that that's what is going to make the difference. I remember uh, some time ago when there were this, this wave of smart TVs that you can control with, oh, with God, head, yeah. uh, <laughs> gestures. gestures. And everybody yeah. thought, oh, my God, this is so cool. This is just like Minority Report. Guess what? It's not. Because it, it the, the technology was not there yet. And I, you know, I have friends that bought it. They were really excited, and you know, it, later, you know, we will go to their place for half dinner, and they're like, "Okay, let me show you this this thing," and they're just making stupid moves, and the thing is not working, and then you know, <laughs> try to resetting and stuff. It's not natural, but when we're talking about voice, it's and, and and as you mentioned, there is you start to build this relationship with the fact that you say something, and the thing reacts to you. It's 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 natural. So yes, I think that this is this is this is the right direction, and as 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 we mentioned earlier. Uh, and as I, we mentioned, uh, uh, you know, ad nauseum in every single, almost in every single episode, focus on consumer behavior, focus on behaviors, focus on what the customer needs, wants, and, 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 and look at how they interact with this technology, because that's what is going to give you the insights to really make a, a successful product or a successful integration. And as you mentioned it, it's natural. So if you, if you understand how this technology is, is affecting the way we behave, and you take action and you go in that direction, chances are that you're going to be able to, to, to tap into something that it could be really, really, really interesting. As we see, uh, it's happening now uh, with, with the big players, but also I'm sure there is a lot of smaller companies that are, are going in that direction. Yeah, and, and I, I think the fact that uh, there are already are startups that are doing very interesting voice-to-text recognition because it's always been kind of half-baked. Although, again, if I try Siri and I do texting on Siri with by saying a text, it actually works very, very well. What The reason I'm saying that is that I would, for, for instance, for Facebook Messenger, you, you couldn't even voice commands, voice, uh, voice 
requests to Facebook M or whoever you're talking to a, a messenger. And I would even make it more natural. If you don't have a choice to go because you might not always want to talk, sometimes you just want to text because you're in a public setting, and it, that would work. Actually, and the, the last thing maybe, uh, and I'll close and I'll close with that, is that all this also kind of brings back this sense of immediacy we were talking about, this sense of urgency uh, that we o always uh, talk about when it comes to, uh, you know, you, you can have direct inter in interaction. You can, you want this now, you can buy it now. You want to talk to Ivan, I can send you a text right now. The same sense of immedi immediacy. There's a, a very funny video that is making the rounds for the past few, da a few days about teenagers trying for the first time uh, Windows 95. And <laughs> I'll put the link to the show because it's hilarious. The really funny fact is at the end, uh, very near the end of the video, you, you see that some of the teenagers feel they would be frustrated, not because of the UI, not because of anything, but because of the speed, because of the fact that everything needs, you need to wait before it happens. And they say nowadays everything is so fast, it's Im immediate. And I think texting, so messaging, and of course voice, are feeling that it, uh, that that uh, fueling that sense of immediacy. You can make now everything on the fly. You can make plans. You can I can say to Ivan, we need to meet tomorrow, and I can ask an app to actually buy me plane tickets, or organize me an Uber to drive to the restaurant where we're going to meet. And Ivan, at the same time, had re uh, booked the the restaurant, but just saying something to an app. You don't have to open an app, yet another Yelp or whatever. Book the restaurant, go to the website of the restaurant. You can have a direct focal point of entry for all this. And I think this is why the battle will be very big because I said at one focal point and everybody is vying for the focal point. Apple is, Facebook is, WeChat is, they all want you to be in one single port of entry and ask it everything. Amen. <laughs> Thank you on that. <laughs> Uh, as usual, you can react online to what we say. If you disagree, don't disagree. If you maybe have a startup that says something, uh, that creates something that is in the lines of what we said today, just reach out to us. The digitalloop.co, you have all the information there, both our uh, Twitter accounts and a Twitter account of the, uh, the, the, the show itself. We're also on Facebook everywhere. Don't hesitate to reach out to us. And we'll see you in the next episode. And maybe by then, uh, Ivan will have calmed down his Gary V impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll see. <laughs> have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.